The following episode depicts gun violence and murder. Listener discretion is advised. It's October 26, 2007. 29-year-old Andrew Robinson is driving his white 2001 Mercedes E320 near Crystal Park in Worcester when shots are fired. Andrew wasn't injured in the shooting, but his prized Mercedes was left with a large caliber bullet in the hole in the front fender. But this was nothing new for Andrew. Getting shot at was nearly a regular occurrence. Andrew had been wounded twice in the summer of 2006 in two separate shootings. In May 2007, Andrew and his friend, 24-year-old Luis Acevedo, were shot at while walking under an overpass in Millbury Street. Like Andrew, Luis was no stranger to gun violence. He was grazed in the head by a bullet near a Southbridge Street gas station a month before the Millbury Street incident. Five days after the shooting near Crystal Park, Listeners may know it as University Park. And when Luis's enemies found them in a third-floor apartment on North Ashland Street, the intruders gunned down Andrew and Luis and fled. A life of violence and close calls had caught up with them, and their murders remain unsolved. Welcome to Unsolved Worcester. I'm your host, Dan Yeager. In this episode of Unsolved Worcester, we take a close look at the murders of Andrew Robinson and Luis Acevedo on Halloween night, 2007. Unsolved Worcester takes a deep dive every Tuesday and Thursday into unsolved murders and missing persons cases under investigation by the Worcester Police Department's detective unit. We look to the past to unsolved murders as far back as the early 1950s and 60s. The approach to unsolved Worcester is this. Shine a light on each of these cases. Put a life behind each victim's name. Provide a timeline of events and important details. And ask questions that still need to be answered. Our goal is to remind residents of the Worcester area, both past and present, that there are dozens of unsolved homicides and missing persons cases that need resolution. We hope we can be the spark needed to solve a case. It's around 9.45 p.m. on Halloween night, October 31st, 2007, when buzzers start ringing loudly for all apartment units at the entrance of 4 North Ashland Street. The nine-unit, three-story corner apartment building is in a neighborhood sandwiched between Elm Park to the west and downtown Worcester to the east, and Pleasant Street to the south and Highland Street to the north. A first-floor resident, hearing the repeated buzzing at the front door, approaches the entrance and sees two men standing outside the door. He opens the door to see what they want, but the men force themselves in. According to the Telegram and Gazette, one of them said to the witness, We are here to see our boys upstairs. The witness later described the suspects as young black men. They sprint past him, up the stairs to the third floor apartment, where Andrew Robinson and Luis Acevedo are inside. The intruders kick the door down to apartment 3B and quickly fire several shots, killing Andrew and Luis. Police reports say both victims were shot in the heart. The first floor resident told the Telegram and Gazette that the suspects didn't waste any time. They quickly ran down the stairs and out the front doors. The squeal of tires leaving the scene was recalled by several witnesses. The resident went upstairs to find Luis face down near the apartment's entrance. He was covered in blood 
taking his last breaths. Andrew was dead on the bedroom floor. Apartment 3B, where Andrew and Luis were gunned down and killed on Halloween, is a character in itself in this real-life story. Andrew and Luis didn't rent the apartment. Their names weren't on the lease. Andrew's last known address was on Belmont Street, and Luis's address was on Sigourney Street. But the pair of friends did live there. And according to the TNG, piles of photos of Luis and Andrew's friends and family were found in the apartment, as well as a book of African-American baby names in the bedroom bureau. In his nearly 30 years on earth, Andrew had fathered seven children with at least six women. Luis had two children of his own. Their mother had been stabbed and killed in her Pleasant Street apartment in 2005. But back to apartment 3B, let's start with what police took from the scene. Two small bags of marijuana, a small bag of crack cocaine, a scale, cell phones. On the ground, police found blood and bullet casings. And while that all may sound like likely to be found in the home of people involved with gangs and drug dealers, there are other items that are completely out of the ordinary. And what we believe makes this unsolved case so compelling. In apartment 3B, police found two police shirts, a pair of pants, a police hat, and a black tie, all issued to a Worcester police officer. Before we go into detail about how and why police uniforms were found in apartment 3B at 4 North Ashland Street, we want to be clear the police officer who the uniforms belonged to was cleared of any wrongdoing. He is still on the Worcester police force, and we will refrain from using his name. According to police, Andrew and Luis stole the uniforms from the officer's mother's home. Andrew had fathered a child with the officer's sister. They had access to the home, and when the opportunity presented itself, the men took the uniforms and had them in their possession the night they were killed. It's unclear if they had ever worn the uniforms to impersonate a police officer. Coming up, believe it or not, there's a second Worcester police officer tied to this case. Less than two weeks. After Andrew and Luis were killed in their apartment on North Ashland Street, police raided a single-family home across town on Ararat Street. On November 11, 2007, Worcester Police Detectives, Vice Squad, and SWAT Team officers descended on the Ararat Street home. Simultaneously, Roshane Holly then 26 years old, and Delane Humphreys, then 22, were pulled over in an SUV on Harrison Street in Worcester's Vernon Hill neighborhood. Both men were arrested on several gun and drug charges, including armed assault with the intent to murder. Police records show Holly often visited the home on Ararat Street, which was owned by a Worcester police officer and his wife. Similar to the situation with the police uniforms, we will refrain from using the police officer's name or the names of his family members. He was cleared of any wrongdoing and remains on the Worcester police force. The Ararat Street home was being rented to the officer's sister-in-law at the time, an employee of Worcester County Jail. Holly had spent the better part of 2002 in Worcester County Jail. The officer's sister-in-law was arrested at the Ararat Street home, where police recovered baggies of cocaine, shotgun shells, digital scales, police scanners, a handgun case, cash, and cell phones. So what do the arrests and raid have to do with the murders of Andrew Robinson and Luis Acevedo? 
Five days before they were killed in their apartment, Andrew and Luis were targeted in a shooting at a four-year-old's birthday party on Gates Street. They fled the scene of the birthday party in Robinson's white Mercedes. Rashane Holly and Delane Humphreys, two young black men, were charged in connection with the October 26th Gates Street shooting. The charges against Holly and Humphreys were filed during the police investigation into Andrew and Luis's murders. In 2010, Humphreys was sentenced to three to eight years in state prison for the Gate Street ambush. In April 2008, nearly six months after the Ararat Street home raid, Holly would be arrested again outside the same Ararat Street home with an outstanding warrant. When an officer attempted to arrest him, Holly tried to fight him. The outstanding warrant stemmed from an incident from the month before when Holly was arrested for threatening a Worcester police officer. Over the next dozen or so years, things didn't change for Holly. His rap sheet just grew longer, and he was arrested multiple times for drug trafficking, drug possession, gun charges, and more. In 2019, Holly was sentenced to 8 to 10 years in state prison for pleading guilty to 16 charges including trafficking cocaine and multiple firearm possession charges. Well, back to Halloween night 2007. Andrew and Luisa's bodies were removed from the apartment on North Ashland Street. They were pronounced dead at a nearby hospital. The day after their murders, November 1, 2007, police had a possible lead on a suspect, 24-year-old male driving a Buick Lucerne. However, it doesn't appear that that lead materialized. It's unknown whether Humphreys and Holly are responsible for Andrew and Luis's deaths. Beyond the fact that they had already tried to kill Andrew and Luis earlier that same week, and that they fit the description of the first floor resident on North Ashland Street as two young black men, police apparently had little else to go on. Families and friends described Andrew and Luis to the local newspaper as best friends, smart, happy and good fathers who enjoyed playing chess, watching CNN, and driving around Worcester in fancy cars. But, ultimately, there's no sugar-coating it. Andrew Robinson and Luis Acevedo were on the wrong path. They lived life on the edge of disaster, involved with gangs and drug dealers, often putting themselves in life-threatening situations of their own cause. Sources told the Telegram and Gazette that both men had a history of playing a violent and dangerous game of stealing from drug dealers. Police would say they died at the hands of their many enemies. Thank you for listening. Anyone with information about the murders of Luis Acevedo and Andrew Robinson are asked to contact the Worcester Police Detective Bureau at 508-799-8651 or send an anonymous text to 274637. Write T-I-P-W-P-D plus your message or send an anonymous web-based message at WorcesterMA.gov forward slash police. I'm Dan Yeager. Come back next time when we discuss the unsolved murder of 32-year-old Candace Scola in July 2002. Be sure to visit Unsolved Worcester on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Unsolved Worcester. Listen to all the episodes for free at unsolvedworcester.com. Spotify, and iTunes. Special thanks to Harvest Design in Northboro, the extensive research provided by Alex London and the Worcester Public Library, the Worcester Police Department, 
Ron Scott at New England Sky Picks, and our sponsors for making this possible. The Unsolved Worcester podcast music is provided by Tom Labelzik of the Worcester Jazz Collective. This episode of Unsolved Worcester is written by Pat Sargent. Drone footage provided by New England Sky Picks. Videography and editing by Colin Turner. Victim images are courtesy of the Worcester Police Department. Executive producer, Pat Sargent. Sponsorship information announcer, Chandler Walsh. Unsolved Worcester website and logo art by Harvest Design. Visit harvest-design.com. Be sure to check out the video for this episode with exclusive aerial views and more on our Unsolved Worcester YouTube page. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button.